Welcome back folks, this is Swap, and today we're going to be going over Eden's Zero Volume 10. Now before we start off, I wanted to give you a quick update with what's going on in this channel and what's going to happen with the Eden Zero manga moving forward. So what I've been seeing lately is that other channels have been experiencing some copyright issues where they're showing off manga images, especially from Kodansha specifically, where they're getting either copyright strikes or in some cases the channels are just being taken down completely. And the majority of the time, most of those channels are either channels that talk like me in the background, they show off images. Or sometimes they don't talk at all and they just show images but regardless uh those type of images that are copyrighted in japan they're protected by japanese law and the japanese law does not recognize the u.s fair use law that we have here with youtube now fortunately i haven't received any copyright issues but in order to protect this channel i will be deleting a lot of those older manga videos that i've been doing so moving forward we will be doing a much different style kind of like when i did made my very first manga video with eden zero where i was kind of just talking my way through and i show maybe a little image every now and then but it's going to be very subtle with that being said i hope you all enjoy my discussion for volume 10 so without further ado let's begin so the volume starts off very simple right so drek and joe has rebecca in his chambers we don't know why he wants her specifically just yet but we're gonna see what happens later with that because right now we got shiki versus Jin, and Jin is just kicking the crap out of shiki right now in fact we see this huge overdrive ability going on with Jin. so he has this new form the ether lines are coming out it looks really awesome and then we get to the worst part of this volume is where we see my girl labilia she is trapped inside this chamber drek and joe has had her beat up she's bruised up she has scratches on her, she has some blood, her clothes are ripped apart, she's chained up. We don't know why she's there, but we know that Drak and Joe did this for Rebecca, apparently. And y'all know how much I love Labilia. When I saw this scene, I was literally disgusted, like disgusted. God, I was so heated when I saw that scene. <laughs> and things are just not looking good at this point. Rebecca finds herself trapped in the same chamber as Labilia. And we got Shiki getting his ass kicked by Jin. And Homura just can't get self off of her ass. And But we do get this nice little scene with Homura where she gets dressed up in a new little costume. So I did appreciate that little segment. And honestly, with each new page, the situation just kept getting worse and worse. The old guy who was looking after Weiss got shot dead. So we can only imagine that Weiss got captured. And then we got Shiki going up against Jin. He goes into overdrive but then Drek and Joe shows up right at the climax beats them both down and says nah you guys aren't really doing overdrive that's just the cute little effect that you guys got and then he shows off his overdrive effect and that shit was crazy when I saw that and we know at this point that if Shiki can barely handle Jin, he probably can't handle Drek and Joe at all and you know Drek and Joe is able to capture Shiki without really any effort and we get to the next pages in the chapter and I love this effect going on because we see the pages get a little bit darker, the ambiance is definitely dark, and you can definitely feel that there's just this evil aura looming about, and things are just not looking good for everybody. Everybody's just surrounded at gunpoint. It looks like you might be like in a dark alley or something like that, so it just really sets the tone for the rest of this book. And then we get to one of those brutal scenes here where Weiss gets his arm chopped off, and it's just so painful to see. You can just see the silhouette of the arm just flying off, blood just gushing everywhere and Weiss's face is just in full pain to the point where he pretty much just faints and at this point I'm like okay maybe he'll grow like some sort of cybernetic armor or something there's just got to be some way to save this situation right and everybody's just sort of desperate to try to escape the situation but there's really no hope everyone on the Eden Zero has been wiped out the shiny stars have all been wiped out because there was the data that was corrupted within the ship the three who were on board earlier, they weren't necessarily defeated. It was more like an illusion of them being defeated. So now they've taken over the ship. Uh, Weiss lost an arm. Shiki's been shot in the lake. They're all chained up down there. Up there, everyone's gone. Happy and Pino are gone. So this is just a really bad situation right now. And then we get to the real painful part. Drek and Joe is someone who's not going to take no for an answer. He knows that Shiki is not going to be able to bend the knee to Drek and Joe. So what does he do? He pulls out his gun and just shoots them square blank in the face. And so at this point, I'm like, okay, the story can only go one of two ways. We're either going to somehow keep moving forward and maybe find a way to revive Shiki. Or we're gonna go with my theory in the previous volumes where Rebecca is able to not only kind of leap very fast but we saw that instance where it almost looked like she was going back in time so maybe she can activate something to go back in time and prevent all this from happening and we actually kind of see both ways play out because it's been a one week since Shiki has died Rebecca's kind of just shivering in fear in her room this whole time she's not really eating anything she's not talking to anybody but they are telling her that Weiss and Homer are okay but in reality okay probably just means yeah they're alive but they're probably miserable Weiss is probably just some bum in the street now with one arm 
and Homer's probably being used as a some sort of sex slave for all I know because they kind of implied that Homer's mother earned her way using her body on some sorts or at least it was implied that way so I'm guessing somebody's having their way with Homer right now and Rebecca's just kind of in her room and she's not really sure what to do but she gets to go to take a shower and that's when she sort of realizes all these feelings that she has for Shiki she gets more emotional and she's thinking about him and that's when we see her ether gear ability kind of um, activate a little bit because we learn from Jack and Joe that he wants Rebecca for her ether gear ability but he's not able to extract it just yet he needs to be able to extract it at just the right time right before she can use it but right after it develops and because he knows about this ability he knows that this is an ability that can really warp reality and he doesn't want anybody to use this against him and unfortunately for Drake and Joe Rebecca is able to use this ability almost instantly the moment it develops we see her kind of just dropping into mid space it's just some weird blank reality and we actually see that she kind of changes figures a little bit we know that this upgraded ability is called Cat Leaper and when we see her in this blank dimension we see that her body is sort of like a cat humanoid alien figure sort of it's not really a human with cosplay ears anymore it really looks like she's sort of a cat person with a real tail so it's kind of hard to know what that means at this point in time but we're just gonna roll with it for now so finally we get to see the part that we always wanted we got Rebecca to leap back into time right before everything happens because I remember clearly when she woke up originally at sister's dorm uh, it was one hour had passed that she was unconscious and everybody had already gone to the fortress. In this case, she woke up half an hour unconsciously and now the people are at the launch pad, they're ready to go and she stops everybody. She says, no, hold on, I need to tell you everything that happened. And so she goes on, tells her her dream, or what she thinks is a dream, but Hermit is the one who kind of brings up, well, it might not be a dream, it's probably you retaining your memories, but really there's no way to prove that because Rebecca's the only one who can really experience this. However, that theory gets put to the test real quick because we get those same three intruders that are coming to the Eden Zero and it turns out they were coming regardless of anybody went into the fortress or not and so <laughs> Rebecca's telling everybody their plan their weaknesses what to anticipate and so that's what they do and they're able to eliminate those three intruders and so now Dragon Joe is actually a little bit worried because he can't get into contact with these three and there's supposed to be this contingency plan that contingency plan is what happened previously in the past but now that's not happening and they're getting a little bit worried with what's going on with the team over there and so now we get some of the final moments where the Eden Zero is plunging right towards the fortress It breaks through the barrier and we get the whole crew not just as a little strike squad We get everybody in the ship coming in ready to do one big strike and Drake and Joe is not anticipating this at all The crew is charging straight in using the knowledge that Rebecca has now everybody knows what they're gonna be up against There should be no surprises and it's just gonna be glorious to see what happens in the next volume However, there is one little piece of info that we get at the very end and it leaves a little bit of mystery with what's going on with Rebecca's ability because when Drek and Joe tells everybody what's happening he says kill everybody but leave number 30 alive and earlier on in the volume he was referring to Rebecca as number 29 but only after this leaper ability happened and going back in time into reality warping reality all of a sudden now he's referring to her as number 30 and I'm pretty sure Drek and Joe doesn't have any retaining memories of what happened with in, in in the future of that reality so what's happening is every time i think rebecca's using this ability uh consciously or unconsciously i don't know what's going on the number keeps going up and i think what's going on is subconsciously everybody kind of accepts that as a new standard in the reality whereas they can't really retain why it's happening but for some reason they can retain that the number is going up so i'm not really sure what that means exactly but mashma did kind of hint at the end that this ability is not just a time travel there's going to be some other little details going on in there but i guess we're going to have to find out what that is in the future and that was volume 10 y'all Post your comments down below. Let me know what you think about what's going on in Eden Zero. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe. So with that being said, I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.